we can create more with fewer clicks, getting more done in less time. Three of the core shortcuts that we need to know starts with Control D, which allows us to drag an item in the space. Next up is Control E, which is to rotate. So if we click one point after activating the shortcut, we'll notice this little compass shows up. If we now select another point, say this horizontal point, we'll hold in shift here to make sure it's horizontally locked and we'll click this node just down here. And this has created an anchor for us to start rotating that item. So if I now push my mouse up, it's going to start rotating that bed. Now, if I hold in shift to make sure we're locked in at 90 degrees and click once more, we've now rotated our bed. If we want to mirror our bed, it's control M. With the command activated, if we click in the center, you'll notice just like with the rotation tool, we still need to click the button once more. Now, if we pull it down from its origin point, then hold in shift so it's locked in at that 90 degrees and then click once more, it's going to mirror that object across its axis if we do it vertically. Same thing if we go control M and do it along the horizontal axis, it's going to flip it the other way. Let's go undo. With these core three, we can get so much done so much quicker in ArchiCAD. And once you're comfortable with these core three, we can now move on to a simple trick that I didn't learn for years. With our object selected, if we go control D, the drag shortcut, and we click on the top of our object, then as we start to drag it away, if we now tap control once, we'll notice a plus button just next to our mouse cursor. When we drag this across and then click once more, this is actually going to create a duplicate of our initial selection. Let's go ahead and delete this one. This can be a really powerful addition. And we can do the same thing if we click the item and go control E to rotate the item. If we now click on the selection and we tap control once, we'll notice the plus icon shows up again. We'll select our second point, which is going to create this anchor for us to then rotate it. Then if we hold in shift and click once more, we'll have created a duplicate of that item. And if we shifted this one across, we'd now have two. And you've guessed it, if we select it and go control M, tap control once, we'll notice that same plus button. And then if we click this item and then drag it along this vertical axis and click once more, we'll create another duplicate again. If we select this object, another really handy shortcut. If we hold in control and tap T just once, this is going to open up the object selection settings. So if we hit escape, so instead of having to go up to this panel just here and click to get to all of the settings for whatever we have selected, it's literally just a quick click away. All right, let's exit out of this one. Now, some of the shortcuts can feel like you have to stretch your hand a lot to get to the shortcut, especially control T. And depending on your hand size, it can be a real stretch. So the beautiful thing is if we go up to options, then go to work environment, and then go to keyboard shortcuts. Now inside of this dialog box, if we go in through and we select all commands by theme, and from here, if we go to search and search D-R-A-G for drag, and we click on to drag with it selected, we can now see the shortcut associated with that command. And the cool thing is we can create our own custom shortcuts. So instead of going control D to activate the drag tool, we could just make it one key. Let's say that we want to use the letter Q for the shortcut. So it's just one key. Now it says it's currently assigned to another shortcut, but the reality is you probably don't use this shortcut already. So it doesn't matter if you override this shortcut. So what we can do is we can go assign anyway, and we go okay. If we select our object, tap the letter Q, click and then drag. This is going to allow us to do that shortcut with one key stroke and a lot less stretching of the hand which in the long term really helps avoid strain when you're doing these kind of shortcuts over and over and over. Now, the cool thing is if we go to shortcut schemes, if you made an adjustment, but you want to undo it, you can very easily click on the original shortcut scheme. Say this one just here, if we double click it and go apply, and if we go back to the shortcuts again, it's going to have taken off all of those custom shortcuts. Now, let's say we wanna keep these and we wanna be able to put it into other projects, Let's say I sign one of these. Let's say we put in the letter Q and we go assign anyway. If I now go to shortcut schemes, I can go store as, I'll give it a name. We can go store and then we can import and export that into different projects. So if we want to go export, we would then select a folder to put that exported data into and then we can import that into our KiCad file the exact same way. So if we click out of this, if we just go import and we import it from that folder that we published the other one to. So export the stuff that you've just set up and you could import it into projects if you like. Shortcuts that I find worth setting up for every single project include the following. 
So if we type in split, this one just here, we can assign this to any key that we like. Let's use the letter C for the shortcut. We'll just override this other one. We'll go assign anyway, and then we'll go OK. And now if we select the wall, then type the letter C, click once, click a second time, then choose a direction. We can cut this wall in half. We can also do this for slabs. So if we select this one just here, if we click the C button, click once in below, hold in shift, and then click it above, and then point it in a direction, click, it's going to slice that slab in half. One of my next favorites is intersect. If we click this one just here, we'll give it a shortcut, say I, we'll go assign, we'll go okay. If we now say have two walls like this, if we select both of the walls like this, and then click the I key, it's going to intersect those two walls, which saves us having to drag each of the walls to meet up. This is a massive time saver. One of the next ones is bring forward, if we click on this just here. Now for this one, I typically like to use the brackets. So for bring forward, I use the right bracket and we'll go assign and we'll go okay. Let's say I click on this table here and I wanna bring it up in the view priority. So if I click this bracket, it's going to bring it up. And if I click it again, it's going to keep bringing it up further and further in the drawing priority. And to be able to set things backwards, and I like to have the other bracket set for sending it back. So if I sign this one and go okay, this means by just pressing the other bracket, I can send it back down in that drawing order. So bringing it up and bringing it down in the drawing becomes so much quicker and easier with these two shortcuts set up. From here, our next big one is grouping. So if we select all these chairs, holding in shift, selecting these ones as well. If we hold in control and tap G, this is going to group these together. So this means if we click off of them and then we click them again, it's going to select all of these without us having to go through the steps of selecting each chair again, which is a massive time saver. Now, if you just wanna select one of the chairs, all we need to do is turn grouping off. So if we tap Alt G, or Command G on a Mac, and we click outside, and then we click the chair, we'll be able to select that individual element. Now, if we turn grouping back on with that chair selected, it's going to select all of those other chairs. Now, if we wanna create a new group, all we'd need to do is turn grouping off, which is Alt G to turn grouping off. We'd deselect by clicking escape. We'd say select three of these chairs. We wanna make these a group, so we can tap Control and G. And this means we're going to now, if we deselect and then select the chair and then turn on grouping, which is Alt G, it's going to select those three chairs. If we select the other chairs, it's going to select that other three in the group that we had previously. Grouping is a massive time saver in the long run. Now you'll be able to know if grouping is turned on or off by this icon just up here. If we hold in Alt and then press G, we'll notice that this icon turns a shade of blue. We can also click this to turn it on and off, but again, we're always looking to find our shortcuts so we can get more done with less clicks in a shorter amount of time. Next up, we've got resize. So if we select our object and hold in control and then press K, we'll have this resize dialog pop up. Now we wanna do this graphically, so we'll make sure this is checked on. We'll go okay. Now, if we click one point and then click a second point, and then drag down, we'll start to see it's resizing that shape. And drag it all the way down, and we click once more. We can quickly resize things inside of ArchiCAD. This next one, such a powerful tool. With the fill tool selected, if we hold in spacebar, we'll notice that there's a little blue line that pops around this shape. If we click once, it's going to instantly fill inside of that shape. It can typically do this for most types of shapes as well. So if we hold in spacebar and click again, it's going to fill in that space instantly. If we say use the slab tool, hold in spacebar and click once, we'll click the slab that we just created, we'll right click and go show selection in 3D. I'll double click my middle mouse button, we'll see that it's created that slab into that shape. And it's not just for lines, if we delete this line and we've just got these walls here at the moment, if we select the slab tool just here, if we hold in spacebar on the exterior perimeter of the wall and we click, we'll go show selection in 3D, we'll notice that that slab has formed to the shape of those walls. So no matter what the shape of the wall is, let's say even if we have an arc in there at the moment and we get that slab, we put it on the edge, click once. If we go into 3D, it's going to match that shape of the wall. And we can do this in reverse as well. So let's say we've got a slab and we select the wall tool. Let's press escape to deselect the slab. Holding in spacebar, 
if we hover over that edge and then we click once, we can now create that wall with one click. Within the right context, this can be a huge time saver. Now let's say we're creating a fill. So if we're using the geometry method polygonal, so polygonal means that if we start clicking, we're going to be able to create a custom shape. Now let's say I accidentally click in the wrong spot. Instead of hitting escape and having to redo everything again, so if I hit escape, we lose all of our progress. Now, if I just click around, then instead of hitting escape, if I just hit backspace, it takes us back one step. I was three years into ARCHICAD before I found out about this. The same trick works for anything that we're using the polygonal method for. So for say lines, let's say we're doing a slab with polygonal like this here. And if we hit backspace, it's going to take us back that one command. Massive time saver, massive stress saver. The file that we're actually using here is my template file. Templates are also a massive shortcut. Professionals set things up once, reuse them, and alter them to suit what we're working on. Just copying and pasting the items saves a massive amount of legwork of setting things up over and over again. So I highly recommend setting one up. Now, if you do want to skip a lot of the legwork, I finally made this template available for purchase, which I'll have a link down to below.